so lucky. Beautiful, almost black main line. guys we're trying to leave hidden valley but it's not so easy it looks like we've bumped into second of the two miles now from the second male's behavior which one is more dominant and more confident the first one um, definitely not comfortable with us so we kept our distance let's have a look there's a different behavior in the second if there's a coalition of brothers the one is dominant and without mating rights the second one is there security and protection. See the battle scars on this on this line so he's been through the wars already um, it looks like he has a couple of bite marks on his back so but you can immediately see that this line is the dominant one of the two very relaxed hardly um, reacted to our arrival just a quick lift of the head and Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to just turn the car to get a nice um, shot for you guys with a Canon zoom lens so that we don't have to disturb him. So just give me a second. Hi guys, Serengeti Show Live and we want to show you behind the scenes what we use to produce this show. Come have a look at our vehicles that we used to shoot. We've got Lucy, this is wet season in the Serengeti, it's extremely wet. So this is the vehicle we use when no other cars can, can drive. The Land Cruiser is a bit heavy. This little uh, Landy is extremely light, you never get stuck in that one. 
This is the, the beast, uh, the cruiser, Mr. Reliable, and uh, we do the bulk of the work on this vehicle. Uh, a lot of camera angles, one from the mirror out here, there's another camera angle through the back there. Our cameraman sits behind me, behind the driver over here, and that's where you get all the amazing low angle shots. We're gonna see if Lucy still works because it's, the rain is coming, so time to give her a crank. Rain check there. Okay, remember that ignition, please. Okay, so 1968 Landy, they still come with these crank handles. Uh, the starter is not very reliable. This is Mr. Reliable. Let's see if she will go today. So you stick it through here. Uh, and through there. If I can get it in, I normally don't have the problem. Uh, it's out of gear, huh? Okay. All right, you need a, a proper turn on this car. Oh, oh dear. Let's see, a little bit more oomph. Yes, yes. size of those paws and it's just massive. I don't think you stand a chance if you get a whack from this line. It's just so much power. The size of those paws are almost the size of my hand. It's just huge. guys what a beautiful line uh, we're trying to head to the migration and then we bumped into this dominant male and a fine specimen of a lion so we're gonna leave him he's very relaxed fast asleep so we're gonna head west and show you the great migration in a bit Ok 
Okay guys, finally we're gonna try and leave Hidden Valley. Just saw the dominant mile and absolutely magnificent and we're gonna now try and head west and find the Great Migration. Hi there guys, welcome back to Kids Corner. Today we're going to show you how to make bread on a stick. Sometimes you don't have an oven, but you don't only need heat to make a bread. So we're going to wrap the bread all around the stick and then we're going to cook it on the fire that we've already made. Okay, get your things ready, get your apron on and ask your mom and dad to help you. You'll need a few ingredients. And remember you know already how to make a fire, so uh, that one is already sorted out. Come with me. Okay guys, we are here with Chef Alex. Guys, my name's Alex. Excellent, so we're gonna show you how to make uh, the dough for the stick bread. First you would need two cups of flour and you put it in a nice mixing bowl. Then you need two teaspoons of baking powder. And you just... This baking powder is what makes the bread go bigger. So a teaspoon and a little bit for love. Two teaspoons of sugar, which we have. One, two, and a bit for love. Just pinch of salt, so that's just a little bit of salt. Two tablespoons of butter. And that's one, two. Okay, so first you will have to mix this together and you crumble the butter into the flour. That's nice and important. So you first Mix all the dry ingredients before you add any wet things. So that's what you do. You wash your hands before you start working in the kitchen. I've washed my hands, they are sparkling clean. So in the bush, guys, during this time of day there's always a lot of flies around especially with the great migration here and it's just a trick if you are out camping and there are lots of flies bothering you then you can use vinegar to just get rid of the flies they don't like vinegar so we've put some vinegar all over the table so still one or two Okay, so one egg, break one egg in here. Make sure there are no little pieces that fall in there. There we go. 75 milliliters of milk, so that goes in. And that's done, so I just want to get the egg off. So this is your dough, and there we go, mix this up now. Okay, but I still have sticky hands, so I'll show you now what we do. So we can take this mixing bowl away, make sure you have a clean table. And the kitchen is always good to clean as you go. Otherwise, it's a lot of work at the end. Okay, so you always try and keep at least one hand clean. And this is my mixing hand. 
so you don't want the dough to stick on the table so you put a little bit of flour at the bottom and the trick with getting your hand clean is you take some of the flour and you just rub your hands clean like okay so now Just uh, mix it. Okay. So you have a nice ball of stick bread dough. Ah. Okay, so <coughs> we also have a, what do you call this? A dough ro uh, rolling thing. Um, so you also don't want the dough to stick on this. So you put a bit of flour over there. The reason we want to roll it out is because we want to have it evenly around your stick. It doesn't have to be so precise. So then I'm going to cut little strips out and that strip I'm going to roll around the stick. When you use a sharp knife, always be careful. It's very sharp. So you have it on the handle. Okay, so then you must get yourself nice sticks. Very important that the stick is better if it's a dry stick, not a wet stick. That it must be a stiff one. And uh, you can put a little bit of flour over, otherwise you don't struggle to get it off. Okay, so then you take one of these strips and you're going to just roll it around like this. It's probably better to start with the other side. got our bread around our sticks and we are gonna cook them now. Come with us. Go guys, bread on a stick, ready for lunch. So how to get it off? You just hold it and wiggle it a bit and turn the stick out. Excellent. Hi right, guys, watch again tomorrow. Then we will have another kids' corner. Enjoy lunch. Well guys, migration update time and we've bumped into huge herds heading north. It's 
seems to be the general direction of, of movement at the moment. We are just west of Hidden Valley, halfway between Cusini and Nabi, and these herds are definitely heading towards Moro. Um, on the move, long line, and I'm going to just grab a very nice close up view, but definite movement towards the north over the last few days. We've had lots of rain, widespread rain all over the Serengeti and uh, it looks like this is the final push for the herds to head north towards the western corridor. They will probably go into the central Serengeti, Serenero Plains and from there uh, they will head to the Grumeti River and then onwards to the Mara River. So spectacular out here on the plains and um, wow, what a day. This must be the, the most amazing, the most famous national park in the world, the Serengeti. Come visit Tanzania, East Africa. some more elephants here on the plains and just so nice to see them out here normally you would find them in uh, woodland or at least with some trees around but out here on the plains as they cross maybe from Maswa into the Serengeti they do cross these plains every now and again beautiful such a privilege to spend time with elephants in East Africa Looks like they're having a nice dust bath. So, looks like it's a breeding herd, so the, this might be a matriarch, female, cow, and uh, a couple of generations of, of siblings. Yeah, it's definitely siblings. One mum with four generations of calves. So it's absolutely stunning. Mm, there might be a bull. A big one over there with a round head. Let's just see how, how they react. I'm not sure if he's in musk. You see the shake of the head, so he's definitely here to breed and the curling of the trunk. So we give him the respect that he wants. And uh, deserves absolutely but that's the elephant language we spoke about earlier this shake of the head and then the and he's gonna come now and uh, assert his dominance here and this is his lady so let's see what he's gonna do seems to be comfortable feeding again sometimes they pretend to be feeding and He's already given us his... It's so nice. Here's the mum closest to us. So that's the cow. That has a couple of generations of... But if the bull joins the breeding herd, then there must be some of the females ready to reproduce. I'm just going to switch off a bit. Exciting. I don't see any of the a big bull in in must. You can almost you smell um, that bull from quite far off. So I don't think this one is the yet build up of hormones and that brings in a lot of aggression and irritation quite quickly so they can react but this one seems very calm slowly gonna creep up on them they seem quite relaxed you can see how they use their feet to 
together the dust and having a dust bath that's really nice protection protection layer and uh, after this they'll be sparkling clean you can see how the the matriarch the head is a lot squarer and how she's prote protecting the the calf so she's in between us and the and the little ones so they're very good mothers two year gestation period so very intelligent very good memory and a lot of emotion so wonderful animals it's great to see them with so few of them left but maybe half a million elephants left in Africa and uh, a good number in Tanzania which is great We will completely respect them, so you see how she's lifting her head and then give us, giving us a shake. She's definitely a, lot, a little bit more upset. Just So one thing about elephants is, is you don't give them the confidence that would you stand your ground as much as you can. And now we can see one, two, three cows, all three of them with youngsters, and then a bull ready to mate, waiting for the cows to come in oestrus. So that's why he's hanging around. There might be another bull around the corner, and they'll compete for mating rights. Uh, just sneak past the bull there. Hopefully, he won't get upset with me. He might want to follow the females, but he seems okay. Yeah, and then we'll go to the other bull down the road. Absolutely stunning. Let's give him one last look. If he comes this way. Let's see how close he wants to get to us. Again, he will decide the distance he wants to walk around. Show him some respect and give him way he wants to follow the females. Definitely showing us he wants his space, so we'll slowly give him his space without giving him the confidence. It definitely looks like he's in the musk, but gentle, telling us how he feels. He says, Please get out of the way, I want to follow the ladies, and then. Great, so we're gonna just wait for him to cross because that's where he wants to be. So we have to be aware of elephant language and how they communicate to you, and then we'll show them respect. I'll now go the other way around him because he wants to be with these females and he wants to express his dominance. And if we show him that respect, then he will be absolutely fine. Pretends to be doing things, and then he's going to turn. And he's pretty relaxed. They all have the. And now that he's with the ladies. Absolutely no problem at all. Okay, we're still trying to get to camp. 
to catch a sunset, but uh, it's just not easy. You, you get to know elephants, they all have their own personalities, some are a little grumpier than others, just like us humans. And, uh, I think this boy here in front of us with the one tusk, uh, he has a few problems with and there the rain is coming from the west and the sunny side and it looks like it's moving south so we might miss the rain today which is a bit of sunshine is really great so this one tusk elephant bull that we are approaching now we know him already he's a little bit temperamental could be a very, he's already shaking his head and we're not even close to him so we will have to make ourselves as big as possible and stand our ground but it's also better to just let him be you know he's he a magnificent elephant you can see the width of the top of his trunk and it just means he's incredible he's already looking at us and he's already sizing us up he's wondering what we're going to do but uh, for now so he might have some hormones building up because there's females in oestrus and there's already another bull that's probably out muscled him and outweighed him and now he's got all that frustration build up the hormones keep on coming but there's no release so we'll see but absolutely stunning we will try and have a look i don't think we can cross here but it's a magnificent bull the way he holds his head up high is uh, magnificent you see now i'm giving him confidence because by reversing and he's reading that as a sign of weakness although i'm just looking for another road <laughs> This is probably how close we can get. Beautiful elephant. Coming straight for us. He's already carrying his head quite high. Looking for trouble and trying to make himself bigger. We have a little bit of protection here. Will help so I can sleep close and also express my dominance and my presence. But he's definitely looking for a fight. He's pretending to eat now, so he's sizing us up. So if we give him confidence at this point, he will definitely come for us. So we're gonna just tell him that we are here and also around so just a little approach half a meter shows him that we mean business to you but all of this is just communication between us and the elephant so that we don't misunderstand each other you know, i can't maneuver with all the mud and things around so i don't have anywhere to go i can't in this i can't outrun him i can't uh, get he's he can run at 50 kilometers an hour and I, I can't maneuver that fast he's now looking for a way to cross to come and give us a, uh, a better look but luckily there's a, s a small little ditch or corongo between us and him he's now pretending to eat but he seems okay he gave us one shake of the head since then he's calmed down you can see the gland on the side of his head it's generally an elephant that's about to go into mass. You can see how high he's carrying his head.
like three young bulls here. So it's three boys. You can see the head is round again. And uh, that means we will have some good genes that will continue into the future. Okay, so we're gonna let them go, leave them in peace, and uh, we're gonna be heading back to camp to watch the sun go down.